Good morning guys, welcome back to another episode on my channel. Today, we are doing something that I have seen a lot of people do, and it's no surprise in and of itself. We all remember the immortal Bob Ross, his amazing paintings, the joy of paintings, happy little clouds, all that sort of stuff. We all remember him. We all remember how great he was at painting and all that, and I've seen countless, and then I mean countless, of people who love to follow his tutorials online and then post videos. And I've seen many people uh, put their own spin on his tu tutorials. I've seen one video where they used frosting instead of paint. I've seen one where they use Copic markers. Uh, draw with, or Mr. Sketchy, that's you. Also, I've seen uh, Draw with Jazza. He does a whole bunch there. He did a parody video. He did some teeny tiny ones. I wouldn't mind doing that either. But I'm going to put my own spin on it and something that I don't think has been done before. I may be wrong and you'll, you may trash me for it in the comments, but I don't think anybody has ever used colored pencils. So I'm planning to follow Bob Ross tutorial using colored pencils. Now I have no clue how this is supposed to work. And... I'm not sure if it'll even work, because if you think about it, colored pencils, you draw a line and it's a thick line, you can't change it, but you can color it darker. With paints, you can start off with a strong color and then get lighter as you brush it out and all that, as Bob Ross tends to do. So for me, I sort of have to work in reverse order of how he paints. He paints a little bit strong and then spreads it out far and wide. I'd have to spread it out far and wide and then slowly make it stronger and all that. It it take a lot of work, I feel. I and color pencils, I don't think sh uh erase that well. So, I can't like just paint over what I have already colored. So while I'm following it, I'm going to have to color really really lightly just to like make sure that it doesn't you know cover up anything and I can color in what I need to and all that sort of stuff and then once I have a, the final piece after doing the video then I'll just color it in darker and just be like make it pop have it finished look like a finished product and all that and we'll see if Bob Ross's uh, tips and tricks actually work let's see if uh, if his paint tricks work for colored pencils I have no clue how well this is going to go. This could go great or this could go terribly. But that's what I'm here for, to see if I can do it well. Probably can't. But we're going to try. We're going to try. All right, so on with the tutorial. Hi, welcome back. Hope you have your easel set up and you're ready to paint along with me today. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to do this painting. And let's go up to the canvas and get started. Now I've already covered this canvas with a thin, even coat of Magic White so it's nice and wet and slick and ready to go. Start a little bit of thalo blue, a little bit of thalo blue, and just work it into the bristles. And let's just put a, let's just put a happy little sky up here, just making little crisscross strokes. Just let your brush bounce around, play, have fun. There we go. A little more of the blue. It's always simple to add more color, but it's a son of a gun to take it out. So use very little color on your brush. You can always go back and put a little more out. Okay. And that quick we have, we have a happy little sky. There we go. And you don't want to kill all these little spots here that happen. It, it ends up looking look like 
like little cloud indications and you really haven't done a thing. Let the canvas work and the magic white work. Then we'll wash our brush. <laughs> Tell you what, let's just use this old big brush, Dan. I'll go right into some titanium white. I'm just gonna pull the brush right through the color. Just pull it right through the, go down here and get a little permanent red. Put it right in there too. And that'll make it, make a little sunlight here. Just pull it one direction. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a big old cloud that lives right there. It's your cloud, so you just put him wherever you want him. Little tiny circles here. And he just sort of floats across the sky. And, and he's got a friend that lives right there. Clouds need friends too. We all need a friend. Okay, now I'm gonna use just the same old brush here. We'll just fill that in a little. Okay. Now, with a clean, dry brush, and I have several of them here, I'm gonna just blend this out a little. I'm not touching the top at all yet. Just blending. I don't wanna kill all the little actions. Just wanna blend them a little bit. And I'm gonna lift it up, sort of fluff that cloud up. We'll fluff this one up. And very lightly, very lightly. We'll just blend it all together. Isn't that easy? We got a quick little sky. That's all it takes. Same old dirty brush, I'll go right into some sap green. Just load that brush full of sap green. And let's go right up here to the canvas and maybe today we'll have, there it is, just a little, little hill like right here. Just let it go. This is just straight sap green, and it's mixing with the magic white that's on the canvas. So you get all the beautiful little things happening. Okay. And all we're doing here is applying some dark color, so our light color will show later on. You need the dark in order to show light. But this is also where you begin deciding the lay of the land. And in my mind, this is sort of roundish here. So keep the strokes going that way. Or however way you want it. Okay, just drop it in. Now I want it darker in the foreground. The landscape should always be darker as they get closer to you. So without cleaning the brush, I'll go right into some Phthalo blue, and down here on the bottom, we'll just drop that in. Just to darken it up. And then we'll work upward so that it gets lighter as we go toward the horizon. And that gives us a nice dark background to play with. And we're not worried about detail or shape or anything else at this point. All I'm doing is applying color to the canvas so we have something to work with. Okay, while I got this old dirty brush, I'll go back and uh, let's use some sap green, some Van Dyke brown, a little lizard and crimson. And maybe, maybe, maybe there's some little trees that live up here. So we'll just drop in some basic shapes. Still not looking for a lot of detail. Just very, very basic shapes. Very basic. Once again, you need this dark color in order to show light. And now we have some little trees up here on top of our hill. Now then, now then, I'm gonna take some titanium white and a little burnt umber in it. White with a little umber. And pull that paint out very flat. Cut across it, get a little roll of paint right out of the edge of your knife. And with that, we can go up here and we'll make some little tree trunk indications. We're not looking for detail yet, so just, just drop them in. Most of these will be covered up, but a few of them will show. A few of them will show. And people will think you work for long periods of time to put them in. This is a little Van Dyke brown here. Maybe there's gonna be a few little trees that 
project right on up like this. We'll put some leaves on them so we're not too worried right now. All we're looking for is just some indications here and there. Okay, let's get us a, a one inch brush and begin putting some highlight here. Let's put a little magic white on the brush. The magic white will thin your paint. So into the magic white, I'll go into some cad yellow and get up some sap green. So we have cad yellow and sap green. Okay, pull that brush in one direction. Load it full of paint. Look at all the paint on that brush. Let's look right on the end. You can see there's a tremendous amount of paint there. Okay, let's go up to the canvas. Let's start right in here. And very gently, we'll just drop in some, some nice little leaves on this tree. Now we begin worrying about a little detail. And this is a very gentle touch. Barely, barely touching the canvas. It's a lot of paint on the brush, so you don't have to push hard. We'll add a little yellow ochre just to change the color. And maybe, there it is, right there. Another happy little tree. Okay, and we'll go back and get a little more of the sap green. And let's, let's just drop a few little indications of some leaves out here on this little tree. See how easy that is? And maybe, maybe on this little tree here, there's just a few little things happening. We can start adding a little permanent red to our color. Okay, maybe right here, it's another little tree. And you have to make these decisions in your world. How many trees are there? It's up to you. Just vary these colors, let them sort of go back and forth, play. one over here. Don't want him to be left out. He cry if you leave him out. But see, he's still worried about the lay of the land. Still want to pay attention to that. Let the land go in the direction you want it to go in. Don't kill all your dark colors. It's dark colors are needed to make the light colors show. Okay, let's go over to the other side of the canvas and we'll drop in some highlights right here on this one. It's sort of work in layers. It really, it really makes your painting much, much deeper. It makes all these things happen. You need that depth in there. We don't want flat paintings. Okay, now, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll take just the point of the knife Cut in a few little sticks and twigs. Just here and there. Now, if you want a twig that's a little wider, turn the knife sideways, and it'll make wider st little sticks and trunks and stuff. If you want them real skinny, use it straight on. And I use just the point of the knife. Okay. Tell you what, let's have a little, let's have a little house right there. Way back in the distance. I'll start with some Van Dyke brown. And, and we'll make a decision. Maybe it lives right there. And we'll do the eaves. See, that's sort of a, a nice way just to lay it out. And here goes the roof. Goes right over like that. See, and you just lay out a basic shape. Pull it all together. There, just barely, barely touching the canvas. You need an overhang. through here. There we go. I don't want this to get too big. I want it to be far away. Far away. Okay, let's take some Van Dyke brown, some white, a little burn umber. And we'll put some highlight on this old building here. Barely, barely touch. Barely touch. Barely touch. Just let it whisper through. Now, we have to make a decision. What kind of roof does it have? Does it have a shingle roof? Flat roof? What do we want? Okay, let's take some permanent red. And we'll use a, the little edge of the knife. and Maybe we'll just drop a few little indications of some shingles. Just touching, pulling at the top of 
this one overlap the other one just let them overlap and you can put all the little shingles you want on here it's a super way to make very simple little shingle roofs we need a door Maybe this is an old barn type building. We'll put a big door in it. Maybe it's just an old barn. The farmer had sitting out here. A little bit of white. We can make that door stand out. And when you're painting buildings, you know, you can change your mind. Maybe, maybe right out here, there's an old shed on this building. Maybe this old farmer here was like me. He ran out of room. So he started putting additions onto it. Need a front. Side. We'll take just a little paint. We'll put some boards in there. Just cut right through the paint. Got just a tiny bit of white paint on the knife. Okay, let's put some indication of if he shingled the roof. Chances are he'd probably put some shingles over here on, on his little shed. Just like that. Now then, let's put some, let's put a little bit of grass around the bottom of this barn. Just right here. He hadn't been keeping his weeds mowed. Nature's about to reclaim this one. There we go. We just wash that brush and start with a nice clean brush. Okay, let's go right here. There, that stands out a little better. Okay, we about have us a little barn. I'm gonna add a tiniest little bit of white right here just to make that stand out so hopefully you can see it just a little better at home. There. I think that'll help make it stand out a little. Alrighty. Now we can start making some more decisions. What do we have here in the foreground? And we'll just keep going with this one inch brush. And, and maybe there's a nice little bush that lives here. You're still concerned about the lay of the land. Follow the lay of the land, most, most important. There it comes. Tell you what, maybe, maybe you can see what's left of an old path here. I see, maybe the trees and the bushes have just about taken it over. But you can still make out a little indication here and there. There used to be an old path there. Take a little brown and white. You can highlight that a little. Just barely touching the canvas. And we don't know where it goes. Okay. Now we need to bring some of these little grassy areas right up to the path. That'll set it down into the painting. And the path sort of gives you a nice perspective, pushes everything back. And a little more of the color. And as I say here, the, the bushes and the trees have just about taken over again. Not much of the path left. So you just cover up whatever you don't want. Just sort of, sort of fades out down here. Can I tell you what? Maybe, maybe it lives a big tree over here. Let's make some black. I'll use some thalo green and alizarin crimson in about equal parts. Thalo green, alizarin crimson. Ooh, that's one of the noises like pulling your finger down a chalkboard, make you shudder. Now then, mix this up real good. A little bit of paint, let's go up here. Maybe we'll make a nice tree trunk. There it is, there it is. This will help push everything back. Maybe, 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 maybe there's a friend that lives right there. Got two tree trunks. 
Get in this, let him go. Right on up. Where does it go? It goes right on out of sight, right off the canvas. Right off the canvas. Good dark color. Give him some little foots down here. Tree needs some foots. Okay. Now then. Put a few little indications of some limbs, and then we can drop some leaves on this tree. And it just helps push your little building back further. Gives you another plane. Use a little brown and white. We'll just put some little indications of some highlight here. Okay. There, just enough to make it stand out. Okay, good. And I'll go right back and get this old big brush. It's still dirty. And let's just take and just very quickly drop in some some general little leaf shapes here. We're not looking for a lot of detail. This is sap green, little Van Dyke brown, little lizard crimson. Just the old, same old dirty brush I was using earlier. It's got a little bit of everything on it. As long as it's dark, that's a big thing. As long as it's dark. And here we're pushing quite hard. Really want to push that color right into the canvas. And I can go back to the one inch brush. We'll put a little, let's use a little bit of cad yellow and sap green. Pull that brush in one direction. Load it full of paint. A lot of paint. Okay, let's go up to the canvas here. And very lightly, very lightly, just begin touching and building in some basic little, little patterns, some little shapes. You don't want your tree to be all flat. Remember that there's limbs projecting towards you. They're not all just going off the sides. So you need all these little patterns inside to make it make it have depth and shape. Don't want it to be just an old flat tree. Okay. Now down here at his foots, we can put some little bushes and stuff down here. And if, if your paint doesn't stick, add a little paint thinner to it, and then it'll stick. Still following the lay of the land. I tell you what, I tell you what, maybe, maybe we can see. Maybe there's a little, little bit of a stream we can see. Maybe it just sort of creeps along here and it lives right there. I'm gonna touch a little thalo blue. Maybe it just comes right down through here, wherever you want it. Or if you don't want a stream in your world, don't put it in. Just pull straight down, you need that dark. Touch a little of the little of the black color that I made. I want it very dark. Very dark. There we go. That's much better. Much better. And very lightly. Just go across. Now we need a fan brush. And we'll use a little magic white and a little, little bit of the titanium white. Magic white and titanium white. I put the magic white in there just to thin it a little. Maybe the little stream comes right down through here. And it just bounces and plays and has fun. Let all these little things happen. Okay, here it comes right on down. I'll tell you what, maybe right here, as a big stone, it hits, kaploosh, and just falls over. This is your stream, so you make it go anywhere you want it to go. Splashes down here, works right on through. There's another one. And there's always stones that are underneath the water. You, you really can't even see them, but they cause all kinds of beautiful little things to happen. And when you buy your first tube of paint, you get that artist's license and it <laughs> Read it. It says you can do anything you want to do. 
at least on this piece of canvas. This piece of canvas is your world. Anything that you want to do. Okay, we'll take a little yellow ochre. A little cad yellow. And I just want to just here and there drop in a few more bushes. I'll tell you what let's do. I'm going to take another fan brush. Let's put some land in here. Use some Van Dyke brown. Burn umber. A lot of paint on the brush. And maybe we'll just scrub in some dirt area here. Put some borders on our little stream. It comes right around. Maybe it's right here. Just to put some dirt in here. Okay, there's another little stone. Where do you want them? Comes right on out here. Okay, I'll just use the same old brush. Take some yellow ochre and a little white on it. And let's just put in some little indications, a little permanent red added to that. That'll sparkle it up. Make it just look like little stones here and there. Wherever, wherever. There we go. And you can put as many little stones as you want in your world. Okay, I'll use the fan brush, a little bit of cad yellow. And let's just drop in some happy little bushes here and there. They come right down. And this brings all this together. Just bring it all together. Okay. Not that easy. You can create a beautiful little painting. And you really don't have to plan it. Just sort of look at it. Let it happen. There we go. Okay, then we can take our brush that had the watercolor on it, clean up these edges. And this is where you bring it all together. Just like so. Take your brown, some of these stones here are very dark. Want them very dark. So they stand out better. There's one right there. Just let it go. Okay. Now then. Tell you what, maybe there's a little stick, a little thing that lives right here. This is just, I'm using that black color. Still using that alizarin crimson and phthalo green. I want it to stand out, nice dark color. And a little limb here and there, wherever you want them. Wherever. There we go. And we can take our liner brush. I use a little thin oil or paint thinner, either one. I use a little oil. And we can put a few little limbs here and there. I like the oil because it slides a little easier when you have a lot of paint here. The paint thinner will work just as well if you don't have oil. And just put an old dead stick out here. There we go. And maybe this some little things that live right there. See this thin paint, you can move it very easily on top of the other paint without becoming a mud mixer. And wherever you want these little sticks, drop them in. Drop them in. Okay, tell you what let's do. Let's take a little more of the oil. I'll go right into some permanent red here. And let's sign this painting. There we are. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a lot of fun. Give you some ideas. And at home, you can make some beautiful paintings also. Until next week, God bless. Happy painting.
All right, guys, this is my little bit of a... This is not finished. This is just after I finished watching the video. I'm now going to go in and darken up the colors, make it a little more like what he has, and see if I can salvage this wreck of scribbling. Yeah, uh, you know what? BRB. guys this is what I have after my sorry attempt to uh, revive my painting not even a painting my colored pencil drawing uh, it's not bad if you look at it from far away it looks pretty good actually if you look at it up close it's a mess of scriggle squib scribbles it's a, it's a scribble mess but from far away, all the colors blend together, and it actually turns out pretty well. It looks almost like what Bob Ross did. Almost. Eh, no, not really. But I tried my best. Color pencils have their limitations. Yeah, there's not as much control as a paintbrush, as I have found out. I would have thought, you know, oh, color pencils, you got a lot of control and all that. And maybe, maybe I rushed it, maybe I rushed through this and, like, didn't take enough time and, like, really make sure I get every detail, but I still tried my best, and it looks rather nice. The, this whole big area right here is a little, uh, it's a little messy. The stream, I, okay, one thing, there's no such thing as a white colored pencil. I know it says white. I know it says white right on it. White. It. This is not a white colored pencil. That is a colorless blender. It literally did nothing to color white. It literally just blends colors. And gives it a little lighter tone to it. It's basically a, a blender. It. It's not for coloring white. If you want something white, leave it white. That's pretty much all I can say. But this is me going in without having watched the video, without knowing what Bob Ross was going to do, and just trying my best to uh, copy what he did. It, it turned out, uh, well, it turned out okay. There are a couple spots where I wish I could do better. Like right here, I didn't even color, blend this. Like all the dirt bank that he talked about. Oh, man. It just looks terrible. Oh, man. But, you know, it come, there's, you reach a certain point where if you fiddle with it more, it basically won't improve it. And I think I've reached that point. Like, looking at this, I can look at it and be like, yeah, all right, I can, do with, I can live with this. Trees, not for colored pencils. Like, seriously, not for colored pencils. Water... Also not very good for colored pencils. Uh, my page is folding just because of all the pressing down I've done. Uh, yeah, water not a thing. Uh, grass is okay. You can't really do tones of grass too well, I guess. The building turned out pretty good, actually. I like the building. It's a little harder to get details on the building, but I found that black... You take a black colored pencil and you sort of sketch the outline of where the white is. Then it sort of accents it and makes it pop a little bit more. But, you know, all in all, I have figured out that colored pencil's not the preferred medium for Bob Ross. And, uh, I can now say that it's, uh, at least I've tried it. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, enjoy your little Bob Ross painting. Bye!